The only way we could have done Watchmen was if we loved superheroes. If we despised them, it wouldn't have been a good book. It wouldn't have been an interesting story. It wouldn't have been as popular a story. We were kind of celebrating superheroes and showing the different types. And for all the bleak issues like Rorschach with his, with his blots and his dead dogs and his terrible things happening, you got an issue with Night Owl where he was flying his owl ship and made, making love to the gorgeous woman's superhero, you know. Mm -hmm. So we did have light, light and shade in it. But it seemed to me the American comic book business took from it, ah, this is how you have to do dark, dark, superheroes. Dark. The darker the better. And I think that's, that's, um, that wasn't the right conclusion. Well, that's interesting to, to you say that, yeah, because you're right, it did make a major shift in the, yeah, in the comics. Yeah, it practice. did. And we felt very guilty about that, that we it was our fault that you had to read all those miserable comics. <laughs> Tell me about the character designs and, and you coming up with the, the, the designs for each of the, the characters in Watchmen. Uh, was, was that out of a conversation you and Alan would have about the characters or was it give me some ideas and then you'd sketch them out and send it to him, how, how would that go? Yeah, we, we talked about who the new characters might be um, because they were obviously kind of, the thing that we found about the Charlton characters was that they kind of covered all the archetypes of comic book characters. You had the detective hero, then you had the, the kind of Batman hero with a bat cave and gadgets and a plane and all that kind of stuff. Then you had the kind of militaristic um, hero who was the, the comedian and of course it was tremendously freeing to come up with new characters because we could make them look exactly how we we wanted them to look we could come up with our own continuity we weren't bound to anything from the past and we originally got the names of the characters right and I was really thrilled because I'd created when I was a kid a character called Night Owl who was exactly the sort of character we needed for the Batman role so Alan said oh that's great that's that's a great name and in fact the costume that I designed when I was 14 years old, we actually use as the costume of the Golden Age um, night, night Owl. So that, that as a fanboy was, was great to actually. Um, but no, I did, a, I did a bunch of designs and we refined them. And I wanted all the characters to look different in their physical types, you know, not just a standard, you know, muscular guy. You had Night Owl who was kind of had a paunch and you had Dr. Manhattan who'd re remodeled himself as the perfect human specimen, you know. And then you had uh, Ozymandias, who was more athletic, and the comedian, who was very thick-set. I wanted them all to have really recognisable silhouettes. Um, and, of course, it was interesting. It was in the course of the character design that I came up with a smiley face badge, because for the comedian, I knew he couldn't look like the Joker, because that had been kind of done, the mad clown. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what, what other kind of comedians are there? Groucho Marx, the moustache, cigar, you know, and a kind of real dry, yeah, deadpan yeah. wit. So that's who I based the comedian on. I first of all did him in a kind of military uniform, kind of camouflage, but that looked a bit dull. And then we thought maybe he could be, you know, in kind of almost bondage stuff with straps. And so we drew that. Big barrel thought, chest. Yeah, and I thought he looks kind of bleak now. He needs something. I thought, I know. Smiley face. So I just drew a little smiley face, but it's really tiny. And then when Alan came to write the first issue, he said, hey, I, I know what that badge could be lying in the gutter. And that's the symbol of the comedian is, is dead. That's his symbol. And then, of course, Alan took that and it became, this, it became the symbol of the whole series, the, the cartoon image with reality splashed across it. But I, I never had that in mind when I drew the smiley face. So it, that was an example of how the sort of creative synergy worked. Is it kind of a bummer, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. uh, that you can't share in like the never-ending acclaim and, and all the other sort of stuff with, uh, about Watchmen with, with Alan? Because he's kind of separated himself from it. Yeah, I mean... And you're obviously still friends with him, so... But well, you, I, you say I'm obviously still friends okay. with him. I, I honestly haven't spoken to Alan for, se for several years, you know. Okay. Um, we were very friendly back in the day, and I very much regret that we got to the point where external circumstances meant the end of that friendship. I certainly can put my hand on my heart and say I did everything I could for it not to happen, but it kind of had an inevitability about it. And I respect Alan, you know, I mean, he lives his own life and, and he, he's, a, he's a very rational man, he's a very passionate man and I totally respect his decisions to do whatever the hell he wants.